everybody, and welcome to the end of Obscurities in Miniature. In 2020, I mean, it's not like I'm going anywhere. I just wanted to be all dramatic and, you know. Nope. We are going to take a look back at my favorite models of 2020 in no particular order. Um, just stuff that really resonated with me. And as always, we will put the links down below. I tried to keep it to a tight 10, and hopefully that is... I, I'm looking at everything in front of me. I think it came out to 10, so we're pretty good. First up was this guy right here. This was one of the Ray Gun Raptors. He was originally a Kickstarter, and now I think they're available on my mini factory. And I have a few that I've started since, but none have come to as quick of fruition as this guy right here. He's my favorite of the bunch. And if you ever notice, he tends to be in the background of an awful lot of videos. He is almost a permanent member of the buildings in the background and the models that tend to permeate around the edges of those. So he is definitely going to be the first to be shown off one of my favorites of the top 10 of 2020. Let's see what else we have. Relic Blades Lotus Blade Song. I really dug this pose. Now, I backed a couple of the Kickstarters. Um, I picked up the starter set from the website way back when. Um, got my signed volumes of the rule books and stuff. But this model in particular, I could not wait for her to come out. It looked really cool. And I know I've got a very strange paint job on her. I don't know why she ended up with blue skin. I've seen a lot of other really nice ones, but this is mine. It really just, I kept looking at her thinking, she needs to have blue skin. I'm totally making her have blue skin. So, sorry, Sean, I've got a blue skin Lotus Blade song. We're going to see a lot of models, it looks like, that have swords pointing in various directions. Uh, next up is another model you've probably noticed in the background many times before, and that is one of the Crimson Hunters from Comet Lord Miniatures. Now, this guy was one of the very first models I ever tried 3D printing, and while the results were less than spectacular, he has a soft spot spot in my heart and that's why he tends to be in the background of most of my videos as well. Funny thing, I have yet to get around to showing off the upgraded versions of them. They've been sitting here. Um, I've been waiting for a chance to actually show them off and I have yet to do it. These are the 2020 versions of the same Crimson Hunters. Like I said, I've got a pile of them already primed and ready to go. I have just not gotten around to filming them yet. So hopefully something to look forward to in 2021, right? All right. Coming up next. And like I said, these are in no particular order. They're a mix of stuff that I've printed, stuff that I've purchased, and stuff that I'm looking around. No, I don't think there's anything that was just sitting around waiting to get done. All right, next up was the leader of the Wolf Clan from GCT Studios, Bushido. This guy just looks cool. Uh, he's just a grizzled up veteran in rags and the cloak. And while I may not be the biggest fan of metal figures, it works. It would have been cool to have this guy in resin, though. Dig the hat, dig the sword, dig the pose, dig everything about him. And I got him painted so quickly... And unfortunately, I still have, like, two members of the Wolf Clan and the dogs still waiting to get finished. But this guy, the leader in particular, just was like, I have to get him done. Speaking of other models that I had to get done almost immediately, we have this Yadaro Savage Orc Chieftain. I believe he was the Chieftain. Um, I know they've offered him up as an STL file. I know they offered him as an actual physical model. That's the one I have. And he was one that I saw. I'm like, oh crap, I gotta get this guy. This looks awesome. If you guys have noticed over the years, I've got a soft spot for barbarians, especially ones with bones and furs and rags like that. Doesn't need to be a human barbarian. Um, as you can see, this, this model looked really cool. I, I dug the look. I dug all the horns and everything jutting out of him. It just, it has a very nice visual profile and hopefully we'll actually get to get him into a game sometime in 2021 
Okay, another dual wielder here. We have Creature Casters. Gosh, I totally looked up his name and I can't remember. <laughs> it's basically their take. Uh, he's part of their... Is he an Atriarch? Lord of Strife. I want to say it's the Lord of Strife. I'll have to double check. I'll put it in the comments, whatever he is, but I really like this model. Um, gosh, when did he come out? Now I'm worried that he wasn't in 2020. I'm pretty sure he was, though. Is he from Adepticon? Or Adepticant? I don't even remember, but I just really dug this model, and you can see here. I, I think I got him painted up really fast as well. He was one of those ones that as soon as I saw it, I had to get him started. Maybe it was from Gen Con. Might have been Gen Con. Okay. Moving right along. I had to get one of these guys in here. One of the Hanzaki from Cobra Mode. You guys know I absolutely love these. I think this is the first one I painted. It's just a fun, silly model. I've got the new Spearman that came out in December waiting to get filmed. Hopefully they'll show up in 2020 when with my poor kanji writing that my whole family was like, oh, you didn't write it right. But I did get kudos from my wife for attempting to try to write the old-fashioned version of Dragon on there as well as on his back. So, just a fun model. Now that I look at it, I wish I went with a lighter hue for the tongue, but it works. Not my best print job either, but it is what it is. Okay. Let's keep this at a nice, considerable pace, and we're going to bust out the Herald of Fire from Parabellum's Conquest line. I saw this guy, and I was like, oh yeah, this one was one for me. I've painted up just about every single, no, I, in fact, I have painted every single Dwegholm hero at this point, but this one in particular was one that really spoke to me. I dug the flaming head. I dug all the spikes and weird machinery, technological bits that are growing all over them. He's got the hand on fire, axes on fire, fire everywhere. There's skulls in the fire. Just He really worked on a whole lot of levels for me. And he looked pretty good probably with a bunch of fire slayers too. Now that I think about it, he's big enough to work as one. So this is the Herald of Fire. All right. Moving on to something a little bit bigger, we have the Possessed Minotaur from Zealot Miniatures. And if you guys can't tell from the style, or no, this was sculpted by Alexi Popovici, who does Bestiera Miniatures, who I'm also a very big fan of, and I've really enjoyed his sculpts throughout the last few years. But this one was just so wild, so crazy. I, I could not wait. It took me a while to finally figure out what to do with it, but, you know, I think I literally started him the same day that I actually had him primed and filmed. So I couldn't wait to get this guy done, and eventually I finally did, and I'm pretty pleased with the results of him. And finally, let me make sure. I'm pretty sure I had nine of them so far. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine. My last one, and again, this is in no particular order, but if you thought there would be a Kingdom Death model, of course there would. Considering the sheer amount of figures from Hoops It Games that I've put out this year in painted form, we have the Fallen Hero. I really dug this model. And yeah, I may have ended up with two of them, and I had the official number zero and the number one model of the limited 500 run, so yeah, 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 and it's not the first one I got either. Talk about crazy luck. Yeah, I, I don't know what I did to deserve that, but um, she is the number one limited edition with the plus one luck. You guys can check out the original video. I just dug the very anime-esque style of clothing she had, the hair over one eye, both Lockman and the sculptor. I don't remember off the top of my head who sculpted it, just really hit it out of the park with this one. And I, I want to say this is one of the first models that really seemed to askew the very cheesecakey, you know, lack of clothing style pinups and move into more something unique and different. And she does have a very anime-esque looking paint job here as well. So that's my favorites 
from 2020, if we can get them all on the screen here. A very eclectic mix, but it wouldn't be an obscurity in miniature without something funky. Hopefully next year we are going to continue to bring you all kinds of interesting, fun stuff. Our first video of 2021 with our weekly painting progress, I promise, should have some interesting things in it. Um, I've been plugging away on quite a few models that have been on the table for the last few weeks. So hopefully we will have them all finished in time to show you guys next year. Hopefully everybody, as I've said many times, you're staying safe, staying sane, and staying busy painting because... This year is going to be a glorious year for gaming. We hope. Fingers crossed. I mean, at the very least, we know that we've got the pinups from Kingdom Death coming. Um, I know there's a couple games I have that are supposed to be shipping soon. There's a lot of fun stuff to look forward to. So like I've said before, uh, thank you to everybody out there who's been watching. Hope this next year is going to be a much better one for all of us moving forward. Fingers crossed. And we look forward to seeing you guys back here in the future as well. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamerlane with Obscurities in Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we'll see you here in 2021 with plenty of new stuff to follow. Bye-bye.